How's it going everybody? This is v 2 Bush. This is a USB tester and a lot of people have been asking how the heck do you test USB cables with it? Although I have this measurement device, I never really needed to measure the impedance of the cable. Sometimes if you suspect the cable is broken, the easiest thing to do is grab another cable of the same type, swap it in and see if it works. Sometimes there are intermittent issues. Usually it breaks around the connector area because there's a lot of flexing going on. And if you plug it in and you see that, oh, it works right now, go ahead and flex the area around the connector on either side and you might see things cut in and out. If you see things cut in and out, I'd say the best thing to do is just toss it away. There's no use in repairing these things because they're so cheap. Now the intention of measuring the cable here is really to measure the impedance of a cable. Something that is longer is going to have a higher resistance than something that is shorter simply because it's longer. There's more resistance assuming the thickness of the cables is about the same. With that said, I'm going to use it one time and show you how this is measured. The first page shows voltage, amperage, the current that has passed through at that particular voltage and also the energy that has passed through. I can press this and clear it out. This is really to measure the energy that's in a power bank. You can drain it to see how much capacity is left over. Now we're going to skip over to the second page here. Voltage, amperage, D plus D minus. These are the data lines. So if you see something over half a volt or under four and a half volts, this is around half of five volts, which is where it's supposed to be. And this indicates the data lines are live. There's also a temperature reading over there. We're going to skip over all this stuff over to the fourth page. Here we see one and two. These are two different measurements. The first one wants to measure the thing in the center is the device. The one on the left is a battery. The one on the right that says R is the load, which is a resistive load. I have these hand warmers. It draws about one amp and it gives a fairly consistent load because you probably don't want to buy a consistent load just to do this measurement. You probably just bought this device and you go, oh, how do you measure the resistance of a cable? Well, just plug something in that you know is somewhat consistent and you see it does 0.89 amps. Okay, this is one measurement without the cable. This little piece right here that's different from that image, it says line, right? That's your cable right there that you're trying to measure. So this is blinking on the top. We press and hold it to take a measurement. Now it's switched over to blinking on the bottom. What you do is unplug it. And then I have a cable here. I'm going to plug this into the power bank. If you have a USB-C cable, plug it in there. Micro USB, plug it in there. I'm going to plug the micro USB in there. And now even though it's powered off, it remembered the measurement from before. We are on the second measurement. Unfortunately, my hand warmers are drawing a little bit more current, but that's okay. We don't need a very exact measurement here. We just press and hold next one of them. And then on the bottom, it shows the resistance of this particular cable, which is 0 0.2 ohms. If you want to figure out how it does this calculation, when you plug this in, it takes a measurement of the voltage and how much current is going through and uses that as a baseline. When you plug in the cable, it's counting on you drawing the same amount of current. This current is flowing through this cable and then back and so there's a voltage drop across this cable. The, and the way they calculate this is this voltage minus this voltage, which is the difference in the voltage drop, divided by the average of this current and that current. These two currents, it's supposed to be the same, but because it's not, they just average it. So then you get 0.212 ohms. If you do the calculation, it's gonna be off a little bit because I think there's a little bit of rounding errors here. So now we know this cable is 0.21 ohms. I'm gonna use this one, which is of a typical length. First, we plug it in again. It's drawing about one amp. So we take a measurement and it goes to the next step. We unplug it connect one end on the cable in here and connect the other end into the device. And luckily the current is about the same. The resistance is about 0.18 ohms. Now you might wonder why does this shorter cable has a higher resistance than this longer cable? It could be because the wiring in this thing is much thinner and I can see this whole cable is a little bit narrower than this one. So sometimes you have thicker gauge cable and it could actually have a lower resistance, even though it's longer. Now, what if you don't have these happy toast hand warmers? There's more of a chance you have some peripheral for your computer, like a keyboard like this one. You just want to make sure whatever you connect to it has a consistent current drain. If I plug this guy in, it's consuming uh, 0.1 amps, but I can increase the current 
by turning all the LEDs, now it's at 0.185. I'd say you just need it to be consistent and you probably want it to be at least 0.1 amps to take a good measurement. Otherwise, if the current is too small, it might have some calculation issues. So now let's take the measurement, press and hold. It's gonna go to the next one. We change the cable again and we press and hold again. The resistance of the cable is 0.26 ohms. Before it thought it was around 0.21 ohms. It turns out the current draw of this keyboard is a lot more consistent than my hand warmers. So keyboard is probably a better bet to use as a load. A micro USB cable actually have five conductors and one shield in it. When you're doing the resistance measurement, you'll only be checking the continuity of the black and the red wire. So what about the two data wires? Here is the second page and it required me to connect the ID line to ground in order to see the D plus and D minus. Now I'm gonna disconnect one of the data lines here. And you can see if it's not connected, it's gonna show something very low, 0.1 volt over here. And if I disconnect the other data line, the D minus line, it's also gonna show uh, 0 0.1 volts. The data lines are a little bit finicky. You have to trick the power supply or your computer into thinking that there is something that requires data and not just drawing power. This sometimes might involve connecting the ID line to ground in order to do the tricking. If you're connecting a USB-C cable, there might be more lines than the five that I described. The impedance will still work though, because it's just measuring the V plus and V minus lines. I'd say measuring the resistance of a cable would only come in handy if you're trying to power something that's really high power and you want the least resistance as possible. Then you might go around trying to look at different cables, which one has the least resistance so that it doesn't have too much voltage drop. Most of the time, you probably don't need to do this. You just use like a thick, heavy cable and you know that's going to have the least resistance. If you're trying to figure out if a cable is working or not, you can just plug it to something that has an LED and then kind of move the cable around to see if the LED light goes in and out, indicating if the power and the ground is intermittently connected or not. Thanks for watching this video. I'll leave an affiliate link for this down in the video description below. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. <laughs>